Welcome to Music Meditation. This is your brain on bass. You may be able to hear in the background a low hum. It is a 40 hertz pitch played on double bass. In the first episode, we discussed the 40 hertz pitch as being the sweet spot of intrabrain communication and that individuals with dementia, including Alzheimer's, have reduced activity in this area. We also discussed how the introduction of an external source of 40 hertz could improve Alzheimer's sufferers' performance on the standard Alzheimer's test by 12%. And while we're on the subject, the piece you will hear at the end of this session is Beethoven's Pathetique Sonata, Second Movement. It is played in the key of E on double bass tuned to an E fundamental at 40 hertz. We have spoken about Dr. Charles Lim's studies on brain conditions that are unique to improvisation, specifically an increase in creativity with a decrease in self-control. We have spoken about the importance of creativity in our health and well-being and Mahali Sikhsen Mahali's view that mental creativity is comparable to biological creativity, that is, the subtle and random changes made over time in our ever-adapting gene pool. Mental creativity is an evolutionary necessity as well. Improvisation is the first step in the creative process, the necessary spark of inspiration that individualizes an idea and, if we are lucky, explores new territory. Studies have shown that improvisational capability improves with exposure, that is, improvising in one area of your life can improve improvising in other areas. It also has the unique properties quantifiable through brain scanning technology. One of the challenges in researching improvisation is that the word tends to be conflated with other creativity synonyms, such as innovation, imagination, extemporization, and spontaneity. The context for this discussion on improvisation is musical, yet we could use the same term for poetry, dance, comedy, drama, theater, and even business and government. In Gilbert Ryle's paper, titled Improvisation, in the journal called Mind, he provides a long list of activities that he considers requiring improvisation, including catching a ball, climbing a ladder, negotiating traffic, and telling a joke. None of his choices were artistic in any way. A professor of psychology, it is possible that he was not one for aesthetics, and although expressions like jazz improvisation may be widely accepted in the world of music, individuals working in different fields may not appreciate such a focused definition. Improvisation is an important part of everything we do. Musical improvisation today is found extensively in jazz, freeform, and rap, but it formerly held a more prominent role during the pre-classical era of music history. Ernst Farrand states in his book titled Improvisation in Nine Centuries of Western Music that sections of polyphonic masses were as much subjected to improvisation as opera areas. And evidence of it is found not only in hymns and dance music, but also in madrigals, chansons, chamber duets, motets, sonatas, sacred concertos, and secular songs Unfortunately, improvisation became less popular through the 18th century, appearing primarily in classical works as free solo cadenzas and in concerts by featured composer performers. Authors such as Derek Bailey refer to the petrifying effect of European classical music on improvisation, calling today's classical music formal, precious, self-absorbed, pompous, harboring rigid conventions and carefully preserved hierarchical distinctions. 
from a philosophical perspective, many other authors have joined him in condemning the elitist snobbery that goes hand in hand with the reverence for geniuses and timeless masterpieces. Thomas Torino discusses the presentational versus participatory nature of our society today. That is, we tend to do more watching than doing. North American society tends to embrace a serious view of arts and culture, placing an emphasis on both the quality of the art and the quality of the performance, which tends to limit enthusiasm for participation if the individual feels that he or she is not good enough. Richard Schechner discusses the tendency of Western culture to separate the entertainment component of performance from the ritual aspect of sharing, again, a commentary on the importance of involvement in the arts as not just presentational, but as a communal part of society. It is possible that a return to our historic roots of improvisation and participation would provide a welcome change to the exclusionary state of the arts in Western society today. There is no doubt that Western society has moved away from musical improvisation in the arts, and by extension, improvisation in all areas of life. Likewise, the societal trend away from improvisation and away from the acceptance of the desire to let go has dampened meditation as a sociably acceptable practice.